Hey everybody, it's Jake and welcome to day two of the Learn SketchUp tutorial series. If you haven't already, just go up to file and save that original shed file that we just did and save it as shed model or anything you want, it doesn't really matter. First thing we're gonna do is let's just get rid of this lady right here. So go ahead and select her with a box and then just hit delete. Remember spacebar is your arrow tool or you can just go up there and click the arrow if you're on a different tool. Also, before we go ahead and get started with the next tools, the we're going to cover circle the arcs and the offset tool uh, guaranteed for sure today but uh quickly if you haven't subscribed to the channel already here's just a quick view of the channel um i have ruby programming and gimp which is a graphic design software and hey look there's the one we just finished and some other stuff uh if you want to check that out and you haven't subscribed make sure to do that all right let's go ahead and exit out of that and get quickly started on our shed so the first thing we're going to cover today is the circle tool. So if you come over here, you'll see this circle right here. Just go ahead and click on that. And you'll see that depending on the plane, it'll change different colors. See right there, it'll change to green if you're on that surface. If you're coming this way, it'll go to red. And that just gives you, this is on either the X, Y, or Z plane, so it's just going to be black like that. But uh, that just gives you an idea of where it's going to be drawn. So if we come over to here and let's just pull it out and then just release it. It doesn't matter what the radius is here. If you look down here, you'll see that the radius was four feet, two inches. Now we can change that by just typing and it's gonna know on your number pad. You can just go ahead and type in three feet. Okay, so we're gonna hit enter. Now that means that it's gonna be six feet across because the radius is half circle, right? Okay, so if you just check that real quick, again, you can use the measuring tape to check that distance and we can check that the length is six feet indeed. Okay. And then again, just for overview, if you want to push pull that up, you just come over here to this tool and you can pull that up just like that. Okay, I'm going to undo that real quick. So that is the circle tool. Now there's more things with the circle tool. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You'll see that the circle is composed of all these different lines right here. See this? See how this arc comes around? Now if I click this, the arcs are close enough together that the SketchUp recognizes that it's one uniform line, right? So each one of these is an individual node within SketchUp and SketchUp can get a lot of geometry in it and then it'll start to slow down. So one way is to mediate that is to create your circles with less of these. Now this isn't that many right now currently but uh, we can definitely do less or we can do more if we want even more detail and we want that edge to be even sharper. So here's how you can make it have less or more sides. So we're just going to go up here to the circle tool. We're going to draw it out like this. As soon as we release this, we're going to type in 6S. So release it, then type 6 and then S down there at the bottom right, you'll see, and then hit enter. So we see we have six sides now and that makes this hexagon right here. So this makes less geometry. Now if we pull out, you can see, okay, that's not a perfect circle, but if we did it as if we did the circle smaller say we were just going to make a pole like a um, like a street light then if we only made it like three inches that's actually how we would want to do it because if we pull this out you'll see that it does look like a smooth circle and we're using less computer memory and and this is one of the most important things with sketchup because sketchup will start to slow down in layout which is where we put all of our images all of our documents and if we have too many if we have too much geometry so we want to just make sure to keep that geometry low by using these best practices so go ahead and just select all of that and I will just delete all of it right here okay now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select the circle tool again and we're just going to draw another one and it doesn't matter what the radius is on this but just let it go let it go and then we need to change the sides on this to 20 s and you see we have 20 sides here and what we're going to do here is i'm going to show you the offset tool so we're going to hit space bar that will bring us back to our arrow and we're just going to select inside this area and we don't have to do this but we're just going to do it anyway so that we for certain get this area and then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and you'll see here that there's this offset tool there's these these uh curved lines with the red line and the, the black one in the arrow we're just going to select that right there and then we're going to come up over here and we're just going to click in the area and we're going to pull away. Now you'll see here at the bottom right that it's telling us the distance. That's telling us how far away 
we are pulling that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that right there. Anywhere is completely fine. And then now we have the circle within this plane. See, it's completely flat. If we go back to arrow key, go ahead and select that circle in there and then just delete it. So the thing that's great about offset is that it's actually pretty smart and it's a quick way to get lines drawn. So let's say if you're doing trim on a house, let's put some trim on this door actually. We're gonna select offset right here. Now let me just show you real quick. If we come in here, you'll see that it's already highlighting this stuff for us, okay? Well, the reason I showed you that we wanted to click in this first is because let's say that we wanted to pull these out and make some trim with this now if we did it right now you'll see that it's pulling out everything from these edges and we're like okay that's not how we want it because we don't want it we just want it to be on the outside of the door so what we're going to do is we're going to undo that there and i'm going to pre-select these lines oh not the surface just these lines so go ahead and pre-select those lines and then go up to offset and then come over here and it will just offset those pre-selected lines. Pull those out. I'm just gonna make that four inches there. And then now we have the trim that surrounds the door. That's perfect. Let's bring out the trim four inches, or sorry, not four inches. Let's bring it out a half inch with our push-pull tool. Just grab that right there. And we'll just bring it out a half inch. All right, looks good. So a half inch, remember, is just 0.5. You don't have to type in the actual inch symbol. Let's go to the back of our shed and I'm going to show you the arc tool real quick. If we come up to here you'll see that there's this arc tool right here. What we're going to do is we want to make an arc right here for a window. So let's go ahead and select our pencil tool real quick and actually no let's select our measuring tape. Let's pull this out. Let's do three feet so we can type in 36 and hit enter because that'll be 36 inches and then 36 again there let's come up to our arc tool right here see how it says two point arc and select that it's that one that looks just like a bow and arrow we're going to collect we're going to select this point right there and this point right here you'll see that by creating these measuring tape lines it's giving us our intersection and that's why it's great to have the use the tape measure. It's a tape measure. Let's check my dyslexia. Yes, tape measure tool. So we'll bring this up. We just select any point and then we select the second point and we can pull it any direction. You see how it's turning different colors depending on which way we're pulling it. We're just going to pull it up and you'll see there at the bottom right that it's giving us our bulge, which is going to be how far we're pulling it up. Let's pull this up. It looks like two, no, a little under two feet. Let's do 22 inches. Type in 22 and hit enter. Now, you'll see here that there's not that much of uh, the sides, right? We want to get more of those, so it's a little bit smoother. So even though we typed in 22 already and made that our radius, we can still come in here and type in 20s, and that'll still smoothen that line. I hope you could see it with that, uh, with the uh, in the video. I hope that it uh, is sharp enough that you can see that that was changed. Let's go ahead and erase these lines here with our eraser tool right here. We'll just slide them over, click and click. Again, let's get rid of these as well. Well, let's let's keep those in for now. All right. Oh no, I lied. Let's actually get rid of them because we're going to create a trim around this half moon window. So how do we do that again? We go to the offset tool right here, and then we come over here. And since we're inside of this and we want trim to be on the bottom half then we can just click right there and we can pull it out this way with the offset tool. And I'm just gonna make that four as well. Let's cover our next tool, which is gonna be scale. So if we come over here to our flat donut, we're gonna to switch to arrow by pressing spacebar, and we're gonna select this whole thing right here, boom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale it. So let's go over to our scale tool, and that's this one right there shows that box it's got the red arrow that's going up to the right we're going to select that you'll see that there's this yellow box around it and what we can do is we can grab these nodes right here and it'll scale it just on that specific node 
It's kind of a stretch right now because it's a two-dimensional surface, but we're going to make this three dimensions in just a minute. Just kind of show you that um, that we can scale that up. Now, let's just undo that real quick. So if we scaled this by the corner, if I pulled this by the corner right here, you'll see that it's equally scaling all across. At the bottom right, you'll see what scale it's, it's uh, being created. So if I release that and I type in two, we've now scaled this up two times. Let's go ahead and hit undo real quick. And I just want to show you how to scale a three-dimensional object because I think that it gives you a lot more options. Well, I don't think it, I know it. But let's push this up just a little bit. Again, it doesn't matter. Now it's turning into a kind of a bearing or tire. And then we're going to select the whole thing. But real quickly, let me just show you another cool way to select things. So if we just click once on this surface, you'll see that it's just selected this plane. If I double click, you'll see it selected the plane and it selected the lines that are around that plane. Do you think there's a triple click? Well, you'd be right, because if we triple click this, it's going to select everything that touches that plane or is connected to that plane in any way. What do I mean by that? Well, if we triple clicked it, you notice how that it didn't touch, it didn't include this shed over here. But let's say that I draw a line from this shed over to here so that these are now married together in some weird way. And then I, I triple click this again, you'll see, oop, it came over here and took this as well. So triple clicking will give you everything. Double clicking gives you the plane and the lines around it. And triple clicking will select everything that the light touches, Simba. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete. Well, let's save this tire in case we need it for later. Let's actually move it. So let's select this whole thing. Come up to our move tool. Remember we talked about that yesterday. Let's just slide that over. Now look at the length at the bottom right. Look, we're still able to determine how far we want this to go. So just release that and then just type 30 feet and hit enter. Whoa, wait a minute, just a minute. Let's go back over to our, our tire real quick. I was gonna show you the scaling. So let's click our scale tool right there on the left. And whoop, we need to select everything first. Go over to our mouse select this whole thing right here and then we're going to hit scale and you'll see that it's giving us all these points they're just everywhere so if we pull this up it'll just scale right there if we pull this over right here it'll scale that way if we pull the corner it'll scale that way equally all of it the whole thing grows let's just undo that so it's a perfect circle real quickly so what if we wanted to pull this out like that and you'll see that it's kind of Whoa, it's wavy. It's going, you know, we're like panning for gold here. Um, oh, by the way, pan, remember guys, is hold down shift and the uh, and the center click wheel, right? Pan, like you're panning for gold. Okay, and if we wanted to scale this equally from this edge right here, say, we can hold down control and see, look at that. It's scaling equally on both ends. Isn't that trippy? So let me show you the difference. Let's just come up here real quick. If we do that, it's keeping that point right there in line, right? If we hold down Control or Command on Mac, it's bringing them out equally. Yep. So if we come over to here on this side, you'll see that same thing is true over here. Same thing is true right here. See how we're we're making it just as tall as we as we are short. short. No, that's not the right that's not the right language to for that. Let's see. We are bringing it up, if we scale it like this, just upwards. But if we hold down control, we're bringing it equally up and down. So undo that. There we go. Almost back. All right, we're back now. Okay, if you haven't already, make sure to save this file. Again, my name is Jacob Williams. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. We're gonna move on to day three. Just go ahead and keep everything here so far. But uh, yeah, like the video, share it if you appreciate it, and we will continue on with our sheds. Remember, this is something that we're going towards right now. Again, not exactly this look. We're gonna change a few things. We're gonna diverge a little bit and uh, do something a little bit different. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be really fun. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel and go on to day three of the Learn SketchUp tutorial series. My name is Jacob Williams. Have a good night.